After finishing the previous Tower of the Planets building video, I found myself with a ton of motivation to work on this tower and completely finish the asteroid belt and Mars. Nice. Today's main focus is on Floor 6, Jupiter, the bringer of Jollity. This is the largest planet of the solar system, so I want it to be the longest floor. I want Saturn, the second largest planet, to be the second longest floor. And Earth, even though it's the fifth largest planet, it's looking like it's gonna be the third longest floor, which I'm fine with. Because, you know, like, the many places you visit, they symbolize the things humans have created, thanks to Earth being able to support life. But at the moment, the floor is, like, 12 minutes long, which would mean Saturn and Jupiter would need to be, like, 15 plus minutes, which is way too long for a single floor. So I think I'm gonna need to begin this video by doing something about that. So we're gonna be shortening the Earth floor, preferably down to around 6 or 7 minutes. This will ultimately come back to being relevant to Jupiter, but, uh, yeah, so I was playtesting the Earth floor earlier, and I found, like, specific things that I want to shorten, and, like, I also nerfed some things because they were annoying. The first thing we're going to do to shorten this is shortening this section of the Chichen Itza section a lot more to be a lot shorter, so it's probably going to be, like, you'll just go around here and up this way as opposed to all the other stuff here. But all the stuff I'm gonna be shortening and like getting rid of from this floor, I'm not actually gonna delete it, I'm just gonna move it elsewhere, like to later in the tower. Cause like it's still good gameplay, it's just I don't really want it here. So this is the first thing we're gonna shorten. Okay, so I've sort of just moved the walls out of the way so I can see what I'm doing better. Specifically what I want to do is this, like these first few jumps are gonna stay the same, but instead of right here, you go all the way around this way and eventually back to on top of this wrap, I'm just gonna put like some head hitters or something. All right, I think I got it all if I move it over by a hundred studs there we go okay i do want the teleporter back in place though and i want the floor back in place now rescale these so that they are the right sizes same for the floor as well and i think another pillar thingy would look good to fill up this empty space over here and i just changed the colors of these pillars so that it adds more variation i don't know i feel like there's still a lot of just empty boring space over here we put like some three by three things that should be good enough and then of course actually making this possible okay actually i won't do head hitters so that way i can use some of the space that's over here which would otherwise just be kind of pointless let me just put like a thing there and maybe a one stud or that works too right there okay so you should be able to head hitter let me just play here to test that okay actually to jump from here to here the ceiling gets in the way so let me just move that over that should fix the problem Yep, there we go. Okay. And this now useless water isn't exactly causing any problems, but I think I should still remove it. Let me use the terrain editor and, like, select this area. Just make sure it's all within the box. I can move this over a little bit, but I'm worried it'll, like, make this be curved and you'll be able to see that from in here, which I don't really want. So we're just gonna leave it like that. And just press delete. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, I can. Okay, so now I can just close that. And this is over here for the time being until I will use it for something else. Evidently, we are doing this out of order because the next thing is going to be on the previous section, which was the Colosseum. The current route involves going this way and on this tightrope and around and you go down here and then on this little section over here, eventually to here. This I would like to change to from this truss, you go over here and straight over here instead of all that other stuff. We're going to delete this and right here put a thing for you to go on and probably other stuff I need to delete that was along this path. Um, these arrows are the first to go. This little section of parkour here could be useful if moved elsewhere so that's the elsewhere for the time being. Let me also make any necessary changes to the invisible walls that prevent you from taking obvious shortcuts. It doesn't look like any changes need to be made uh, there is this wall, where is it? There is this wall here, which prevented you from going over here, which previously led you to this parkour. But since there is no parkour there, I can just delete that. Since you no longer go this way, this, like, kill break isn't necessary, but I think I'm gonna leave it, just because why not? It adds a little more variation to looking at this. And, yep, that's about it. I basically then repeated that for Machu Picchu and Taj Mahal. Machu Picchu went from this to this and Taj Mahal went from this to this. I removed the, like, button section. At this point, the only, like, line of parkour missing between anything up to there is the parkour between the moon and Mars. I've added a little bit more since you last saw it, even though I never really pointed it out, but before it went to only, like, uh, here, I think. But now it goes all the way over here. Wow. And what a better spot to take some of the parkour that was removed from the previous sections and put them over there. We'll do this one first, then this one, then this one. I want to do the buttons last because there's already a timed button section uh, in that like area. 
so I want to put some more space between them. Right here seems as good a place as any, so let me do Control R twice to rotate it 180 degrees. We'll need some parkour leading from here down to here. But this is still going to require some modifications from how it was originally. We'll also take into consideration that there was a safety net previously, but there's not anymore. So I think I should probably remove that. Well, okay, it was a wall hop. Let's do that. That should make that better. And perhaps nerf this a little bit too. I think I should try and space some of this stuff out because we're because we're in space, so we should space it out. Aha! Like, I don't want a ton of parkour right there and like barely anything here. Okay, so like the path currently goes like this way. I could try to sort of unfold it i guess would be a way to put that and put some more distance between the different things i think i'm just going to remove these entirely so the next part of this you'll go to will be up here and all this kind of requires the ceiling above it to like work right i'm also noticing this is completely useless now as are these they were sort of just for decoration but they're not needed here so i'm going to put a ceiling kind of thing above here and what you're supposed to do here is like do that so it begins swinging and you would use that to like jump to the next thing i think i guess i could do that head hittering straight to there i was gonna put like a part right there but i don't think i need to but i will move that in about two studs nope then it's too easy okay so move it back out one stud so it'll be as if i moved it in only one stud it's probably still possible but i will put a sign telling you you should do that so it begins swinging which will make that presumably easier and then on top of here I'll just do a push box or something. And if you're wondering, this path of parkour is going to go around here and to Mars because I want you to be able to, like, see something out the other side of the International Space Station. I think that'd be pretty cool. Through this window and the one over here, you see Earth and, I guess, some stuff over there. But from here, all you see is that. Until now. Well, actually, I'm going to finish this outside later. So now let's begin work on Jupiter. It's the first of the outer planets, and it's one of the two gas giants in the solar system. Yeah, it turns out Uranus and Neptune actually aren't gas giants, there's something similar called ice giants. Of this, I became aware only upon planning out this video. The main difference between gas and ice giants is that gas giants are made of mostly hydrogen and helium, while ice giants are made of mostly heavier elements. But it still remains true that gas giants and ice giants are still made of mostly gases, and therefore lack a solid surface that you can stand on like the terrestrial inner planets do. Yet the gas and ice giants have solid cores. Yeah, it took me a while to figure out how that made any sense. But recently I saw these videos titled Falling Into Some Planet, which helped me understand it much better. Basically, as you fall further into a gas or ice giant, you're falling through non-solid gas for a while before you hit an ocean of some element in the liquid state. And if you keep going, you'll eventually hit a solid core. Basically, there's nothing obviously a surface of gas or ice giants like is the case for terrestrial planets. Titan, a terrestrial moon of Saturn, is unique because it has surface liquid, the only place in the solar system besides Earth with that feature. From that, we can conclude that these liquid layers of the gas and ice giants don't count as being on the surface, which makes sense because there is no surface. You're deep inside the planet by the time you hit the liquid layer. Every planet I've built so far in Tower of the Planets has involved a teleporter to a separate area so I have more space and have better control over lighting and stuff to make it seem like you're on that planet. I was planning to do that for only the smaller celestial bodies and keep all the parkour above the planet itself for the large outer planets, but I think I've changed my mind. I think it would be cool if I built some of the parkour for the outer planets above the planets themselves, but for the rest you descend into their atmosphere as low as the liquid layer. Those sections will involve you getting teleported to another area. I know for sure I'm at least going to do that for Jupiter. Now before I explain my plans for the Jupiter floor itself, let me first explain the song I'll compose for it. In Gustav Holst's The Planet Suite, the movement for this planet includes a hymn tune called Thaxted, which sounds like this. It's named after the English town where Holst lived for a long time. So what I'm gonna do is make the song for the Jupiter floor be a song in six movements called Rero's Variations on Thaxted, where each movement is a different variation. I was gonna just call it Variations on Thaxted, but then it occurred to me there are probably plenty of other things already called exactly that, so I put my name on it. Problem solved. Also, by shortening the Earth floor, that means Saturn and Jupiter can be around 8 to 10 minutes. But Jupiter, I'm aiming for that to be about 10 minutes to complete. And 10 minutes divided by 6 movements gives us each movement should be about a minute and a half. With all that said about the planet Jupiter and Holst's and my own music for it, my plan for this floor is that it will have large catching platforms on stilts for you to stand on since there's no surface to stand on. Some of the parkour won't be over these platforms though. If you fall below the platforms, your run will end. 
In total, the Jupiter Flow will have six of these platforms, one for each movement of the song I'll compose for. Because each movement is about a minute and a half, each platform will be about a minute and a half to complete. This video being part one of the Floor 6 building, we'll be building three of those six platforms today. Let's begin. Okay, so the asteroid belt, I put this here, that sign says this is the end for the time being, just move that out of the way. You know, having just completed, I timed this earlier as well, this is like 11 to 12 minutes to complete this whole outside, and there's no safety net basically the entire time. So I feel like you should get a break after that. So this is a walk speed and jump remover. So you basically just go up the slow conveyor and there'll be like text that appears on screen with some messages about like the planets you're about to encounter. And it slowly leads up to here. Oh, and yeah, okay, I do need to make a new decal because this one looks terrible, but it's gonna remain looking like this for a little bit longer. Okay, so let's first build the first like large catching platform. And by the way, for each of these, there's gonna be like a different gameplay kind of thing. So like, for example, the first one is a button hunt and the movement that like goes with that, the variation on Thaxted for that, will be somehow based on whatever the gameplay is. Well, okay, for most of them, not for this one. This one's just sort of like introducing the theme. Yeah, like honestly, I feel like a lot of times themes and variations, I can never figure out what the theme actually is. So like for this one, I'll make sure it's very clear what it is for anyone who's never heard it. Let me take the position of the planet itself and then just paste that here and then move it back up. That way I can be sure it's centered. Then just drag to move these onto the corners as they just were. Actually, I could do them all at once, couldn't I? And we can put like a sort of railing kind of thing also, like a little edge, like so that if you were to just like walk straight into the wall, you wouldn't fall off. We'll go four studs tall. Not that that's really needed, but I think it would look nice. And since it's there, we may as well make it actually work as intended. Okay, now let's just make that large enough. Let's go 100 by 100. Oh, and now I gotta reposition all these. Great. Okay, now let's make this be less boring than the default color. I kind of think it would be cool if I made it the concrete. This will be the color of the platforms on stilts for all of the outer planets. And by the way, this one's probably gonna be the largest ones of all the ones for Jupiter, since I kind of feel like I need a lot of space for a button hunt. What I'll do now, though, is make the conveyor right there be the slow conveyor, and then do this. This is temporary, what I'm doing here. Just since there's nothing to read right there, it would take forever and be kind of pointless. So just for now, it's like this. Honestly, I'll probably change how I'm doing this at some point, but for now, this is how this is gonna go. The colors I'm gonna go with for this floor are gonna be these two. But unlike here, where I mainly used the blue, but the like dark purple was like an accent color kind of thing, here I'll be using these two colors equally. Now the question is, how do I wanna do a button hunt? Well, I suppose each button can activate something over here just a truss, so that'll be what the buttons actually do. What I think I'm gonna do is put a mix of like stuff that's not really gameplay, it's just like walking around looking for it, and some stuff that is. I think here, it's all gonna be over the safety net. So like, let me start with just like a mini maze kind of thing. Okay, we'll just put the buttons all in place for now. I will recolor them and stuff later. And how many buttons total do I want there to be? I guess like six will work. Three of those are gonna be in these, like, mini mazes, so you don't have to do any, like, parkour to get to them. The other three, you'll, like, have to do some parkour. It'll still all, or mostly at least, be over the catching platform. Let me start by putting, like, maybe a few things like this that you would use to jump on top of these. We'll do, like, one per maze. That'll give some more, like, things in maze, instead of just the button. Okay, now, parkour after that. Hmm. They could, like, overlap. So, like, I, instead of just having the parkour that you get to from here being above this, we could, like, put some other platforms above here, perhaps. For example, a part here. Obviously, this would be too high to jump to from just being on top of here. So, it'll probably still be pretty easy to figure out where the buttons are, but maybe finding out how to get to them, not so much. But not too confusing, though. And I'm gonna try to not use a ton of neon like I did down here, because I feel like we should mix in different styles of detail. So, I'm gonna try to keep everything to just these two colors. I will try to use wedges a lot, which I kind of did down there. But like, how about just as a rule for this entire floor, any one stud poles that don't have anything on top of them will have a wedge like that, a one by one wedge. You know what, we'll have lots of stuff rotated by 45 degrees. Y you know, like this is a 45 degree angle and I'll take this and rotate it by 45 degrees. But relative to that, 
the one stud pole will be rotated 45 degrees. Let's see, I can make use of a wedge by putting one right here and then you'd like wrap to over here. Okay, so here's the first one. It will involve a ladder flick. Okay, we'll build the one that starts here next. I think it's about time for a client object. We're gonna do that thing where like the X pusher has some platforms welded to it that move slowly. And so you gotta like jump to them as they slowly move back. I did that over here with this uh, truss X pusher but it was like one thing attached to it. Here, we're going to use that mechanic a bit more. So it's pretty simple, actually. I just need to weld everything to this. Actually, I could weld it to this as well, since this is welded to this, but I think it makes more sense to weld everything to the same platform. This is the platform that's like actually moving because it's the one with the vector force, which applies like force to some part. And let me put like a wall in the path as well, so that way if you like run out of time, then you'll get knocked off the platform. Got a few platforms in place and I want to test them, but to make it actually move slower, I need to go to the vector force and then change the force. It's a th it's three numbers because it's like an X, Y, Z value because it's like applying it in different directions. I want it to move pretty slowly, so let's decrease that a lot. How about 300? Let's see what that's like. Still more than I would like, so let's try even less. Okay, setting that to 100 seems to work well. I sort of like what you have to do here. You have to like jump to that in time before you'll get knocked off of here. This doesn't go, like, you won't get knocked off of this platform. Instead, you'll just jump off on top of this wall, and then you can jump onto here. Wait, but what if I take the X platform, put that right there, so it's like another place where you can move the thing, then maybe take another one of these, and a distance that you normally couldn't jump to, but you'd have to use the momentum of the X pusher to make the jump. Kind of like what was the case for this jump. You kind of have to let it start moving before you can make that jump and go into climbing animation. That's definitely way too far though. Alright, I think this works pretty well. You have to wait until it's like going about this fast and then you would jump. Alright, I've finished up this first platform by building the parkour that leads off of this one, which goes this way, leading to this button. And playing through all that, it took about a minute to a minute and a half, which is exactly how long I want it to be. Well, maybe the other sections I want to be a little bit longer than that, but here, that's okay because like, I already know where all the buttons are and, like, the route you're supposed to take. So if you didn't know that, it would probably take that additional time leading up to about a minute and a half to two minutes. That and additional time to get to the trusses. But actually, I don't think I want to do trusses. Let's do an elevator, because, like, trusses, you go up, but elevators, you can go up or down. And since you're descending into the planet, see how it makes sense? I thought it would be elevator. Well, actually, I don't mean the client object of an elevator. I mean, like a thing that's supposed to look like elevators in real life, like in a skyscraper or most buildings these days. Not sure if I'll just use a teleporter yet, or if I'll try to use like an actual moving part, but we will see. This is gonna go like off of this concrete platform, but it's gonna be very easy to not fall, because you're literally just walking across that. And we're making it this color because it's right next to this mini maze. Okay, I've put these six parts here and colored them all differently, but still matching like the color of Jupiter, and also applied those colors to all the buttons. Now what I wanna do is rename them all to button activated platform, and let's set the obby to be button platforms, and then I can just select one of them and insert a bool value and name that invert. This bool value is gonna make it so that it gets deactivated by the button rather than activated by the button. I could put full hide also, which will make it go completely invisible when you press the button, but nah, I would still want it to be visible. So when you press all the buttons, which by the way, you can do that in any order, uh, you can just walk through here. It's kind of cool. It's like a transition, sort of. And at the moment, that happens. You just fall in the void. Uh, let's fix that. All right, there we go, that works. For what I'm gonna build next, we're gonna go back to Tower of Among Us for a second. For the second platform, we're basically going to create something based on one specific thing from this tower. Is it that one? Yes, I guessed it right. On floor 6, side A, there's this one part where you're supposed to, like, run back and forth across there to press those buttons, and it will swap which of these are activated, and eventually get the push box down onto that button. Allow me to demonstrate. You can see, as it reaches the bottom, it does that. Yay! We're gonna be expanding on that back and forth concept here. What this is, is the separate area you get teleported to after you ride down the elevator. And so here's like the bottom of the elevator. Well, actually, it presumably keeps going down. Hmm. But yeah, you're gonna have to run back and forth a bunch of times, as was the case in Tower of Among Us. But this time, each time you run between these two platforms where the two buttons are gonna be, 
the section is going to get buffed a little bit. So you have to run back and forth, probably not as many times as you had to in Tower of Among Us, but maybe like four or five. Okay, so this seems like a good spot for where the X pusher... Okay, just say the complete wrong thing. Um, the push box, like, dispenser thing will go. We can make this like the elevator, just go, like all the way up to the ceiling, which is going to be a fog end, so it looks like it just extends infinitely upward. Let's give this 0.6 transparency so you can see through here, and even though this is really tall, we're not going to use most of the space. Okay, I got pretty much everything set up to build this. So I put six buttons in place, and I got the push box and six platforms that are currently just normal platforms. They'll be button activated eventually. Some of the platforms are over your impending doom, others over the platform itself. And we have this, like, main bridge here. I think I want to put a kill brick on top of it, because that was the case in Tower of Among Us. And, I don't know, I feel like I haven't been using kill bricks enough on this tower. And so, for this room here, there's gonna be two of these platforms. There will be three for the next one, which will add up to a total of six, if you add the other one from over there. Of the two in this room, this one's gonna primarily use the red-colored stuff. The other one is gonna use the yellow. Other than kill bricks and other client objects, apparently. Well, it makes sense to add this as a nerf, or I mean buff, that happens eventually. Okay, then scratch that. We will take, how about this button, and make it the color of that, and name it button activated platform, and I think just put it in the button platforms folder, and then it should work. I'll probably want to do full hide, actually, but uh, whatever. When you press the button, that's not the button, you press this one, it begins also giving off the particles, but also damaging you. Don't ask why I said them in that order. Let me just move that out of the way, though, so it's not too confusing as I build a different nerf. I mean, buff. I'm gonna say that wrong. I don't know why. Well, actually, it's like 3 a.m., so I guess that would explain something. This is gonna be the one you go to first. I think that makes sense because it's the one right next to the elevator. So, like, you climb up this truss, uh, since this is the first one, actually, why is there a button? I suppose there doesn't need to be a button. I mean, I could make it buff the section. Hey, I said the right thing. Or maybe I could get rid of that button and put another platform over here, but I think I'm just gonna make there be one less platform. Okay, so with no button here, you would simply walk across the bridge. Easy. So you press this button, which would deactivate the first one of those, as well as activate, like, wraparounds or something. Then you go back over here, it would also activate something that allows you to get to this next button. I suppose the first platform was, like, quite easy, but I guess that's fine, because you deserve kind of a break after the 11 minute outside that was the asteroid belt. So I guess over this platform I'm building now, and the next one, which will probably be over here, the difficulty will slowly go back up to, like, insane or so. So we'll start off pretty simple with the things that get activated by the buttons. This first one, it's just going to be three pretty easy stickouts. Okay, so you press that, it activates those. Wait a second. Anytime you're going back from this side, you could just jump off and go up this truss. Maybe what I could do is use like morphers and there's also a morpher on top of each of these buttons that you also hit which will move this back and forth across here. That way you have to actually go back and forth um, across the bridge. For now though, I think that's a good place to stop for the 3 a.m. that it is now. Yeah, I should definitely go to bed. Alright, it's the next day. The last thing I want to build in today's video is going to be the third platform. So let me just go ahead and copy and paste this one. I'll change the size, though. Okay, so we have the next platform. It's a little bit larger than this one. And the gameplay th theme for this one is purism gameplay. So no client objects. Now, how do I want, like, to start this, though? Let's see. Uh, you would go to this one, then back, then back, then back, then back. Then you would need to use the push box. Right, I forgot that's the last thing you're doing. You could use the push box and, like, push it up this ramp. And then you'd use the push box to make the jump onto a ledge here, and from there I'd put like another thing probably so you could make this jump. Okay, so can you even get this up the ramp or is it too steep? It looks like it's too steep. Okay, so you'd use this to jump up there. Without the push box, I don't think you can make it. You might be able to high jump or something. So let me just move it up like two more studs. Now we just need a platform about right here. It'll be a one stud pole with a wedge on top. Let's start with some like walls like this, kind of like I was doing for the asteroid belt. Oh, and right, I wanted to make this be the other color stuff on here. Okay, so just select all those and change the color. But for this purest section, I'm going to use lots of ladders and truss flicks. I think that would be good. When you use ladders instead of trusses, they tend to be kind of more annoying because you have to, like, line it up better. But we're over safety net, so I'm going to use those kind of a lot here for maybe the start of this section. That way you only have to deal with that for a little bit, and once you pass that, it's not too bad afterwards. Wait, I didn't want anything to be rotated. I forgot I was going to do that. Oopsie. 
right here is probably going to be the hardest jump of this section, but it's like near the start, so yeah. And then afterwards, I'll just put a platform like I was doing on the first, like, large catching platform, where it's like rotated 45 degrees like that. At the moment, I'm making a slanted ladder. Isn't that so cool? Well, I've only put one truss this whole time, so let me do something about that. Let's put everyone's favorite type of truss jump. The ones where there's a ceiling right above you. Then we could like, you have to climb down it and then jump off. Yeah, let's do that. Onto like a one stud pole. And then how about a wall hop? I haven't put any of those yet. It's not that difficult though. Oh, but then here's where things get so interesting. Cause there's gonna be a shadow section. It'll be like another maze, kind of like was the case on the first platform, but it's gonna be pretty easy to figure it out. Cause it'll be even smaller than those ones were. Off of this wall hop, you're probably gonna land in this area. So what if I do this to put a wrap around? I guess I'd need one over here too. This would be a five stud stick out, which is impossible. Okay, make this taller so you can't just jump on top of it. Now let me put some other things in place to communicate like how tall these are. Okay, so I use like the gray shadow things rather than the black ones where it's like a larger wall kind of. So it's sort of like when it's further away, I guess. Like if I just actually projected all the walls onto this wall, then like this whole thing would be black and it would provide like no useful information. This is a little bit more useful because it like helps you figure out where the things are, even though I guess the floor kind of does that. Why is I okay, I didn't put one there. Oopsie. Well, if you look closely, you will find that this one should be low enough to jump to it. It's not. Let me fix that. Okay, so you jump up there, and mm, you could probably jump to there if you, like, lined it up right. Or just jump on top of any of the other walls and do that. And then this platform is going to end where you do some jumps going this way and onto here, and I'll put the, like, elevator. So now it's time to play everything I've built in this video start to finish. So the asteroid belt will end here with these two pretty easy jumps. And this is going to be a conveyor that'll be much slower, and it'll have some messages on screen, but for now it's just that and then you fall from there. You can probably take a shortcut from up here. Yeah, you can. Okay, I'll do something about that, but not right now. Okay, so this is the first platform, a button hunt. You can get the buttons in any order, but let's start with this one where you do parkour, because to get to the button there, you have to go from the other side. But anyway, you have some jumps. They're not that difficult. This one's a long jump. Probably will need to go into climbing animation. Then do this to ladder flick to that. Okay, let's go back to here and get the button in the maze, which is pretty easy to get to. You do that. Okay, we can go get the one here now, which is here. And if you go over here, you can get on top of here. Over here, you're supposed to jump to there and like this to get to this button. And you know what? Okay, I guess from there you can... Yeah, okay, so you can like skip certain things depending on like what you do if you were to go the normal way through this mini maze you'd go like this and to get on top of here you will do that there's one more button left there are six in total this one involves an x pusher that goes back pretty slowly so make sure you just let it pick up some speed before you try to jump on that one and from here to here um, that'll make the jump easier but here don't wait too long you need to wait a short enough time for to where you can make that jump but not too long so that you can jump from here onto here then do that, that is a slightly long jump, so be careful. And that's the last button. Then go over here to this elevator, and when you step on it, it will begin moving downward. Then some lighting effects will change, and you'll get teleported to here. So this is the second platform, this is the back and forth one. So first you want to climb up this truss, and then go across the bridge. It will buff this a little bit, and then you'd go back, and uh, you'd press the next button once it's possible, and yeah. Each button would deactivate one of these, so you eventually get the push box, but at the moment just so you don't actually have to do this at all yet but once you get the push box you will do that and then you will use it to get up here and to the next platform this is the purest one it uses a lot of ladders and truss flicks the hardest of the ladder flicks is probably this one but it's only like three jumps in so if you miss it it's not that big of a deal and here probably jumps sideways then you got a 10 stud wrap there jumping around these could be kind of annoying i guess especially in the roblox studio play testing because the mouse is like more sensitive and then you would do that to get on top of here it might be possible to like go underneath here it probably is but it would be really hard well if you want to take the epic gamer shortcut you could i suppose and then you would jump to this angled ladder flick thing and uh, i didn't test that that was possible well now it is you will ladder flick onto here and then you have these trusses you can just like hold space probably not when you go around the corners though because then you might get flung that's just a tip for doing these types of trust 
things. When you get to this side of this truss, just climb down to about here. That way you can jump and do that. Then another jump and wall hop there and wrap around and then carefully analyze the shadows. Oh, I forgot something. There should be some gray here and here. Okay, whatever. But you're supposed to go to here and then you would jump up. Then just a couple more jumps before the floor ends, or platform, I mean. This is only a sixth of the floor. There we go. Okay, this is the end for the time being. It will lead into like an elevator like this, and that will be the halfway point of the floor also. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. This being part one of the video, I built the first three platforms. In part two, we will build the next three, and probably the floor extension as well, which would be Jupiter's moon Io. Well, one of its moons. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.